This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. I'm shaking your body. Wake your fuck ass up. We got one of our, our brethren, one of our family members came to visit us today, Heather B. That's nice. We are in the presence of royalty, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. He's an author, he's an attorney, he's an entrepreneur, he's a CPA. Um, he has his own show on Sirius XM Urban View Channel 126. Right, 126? He's here with us today to help you save money and avoid prison. <laughs> <laughs> From the host of the Lou Hut Show, he's here with us Saturdays at 9 a.m. Eastern. You can check him out on Sirius XM Urban View Channel 126. Welcome Lou Hut to the show. Hey, Lou. Great to be here. Man. Thank you so much. Appreciate the warmth and hospitality. Uh, what better place to be a couple of days before tax season than here on the Sway Show? Yo, man. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you something, Lou. My, my, our citizens... Yes, we we need to know what's happening right, with well, taxes, that's man. True. That's true. I tell you a story, man. When I was young, and um, I, I'm trying to think how young I was, um, maybe about 21, 20, oh, okay. 22-ish. 23. Let's, let's it's pick some, a number. Somewhere like in that age. Let's say sway somewhere was, in that age. Sway was 22. Okay, let's say I'm sway at 22. Okay. Um, and uh, my partner, Keen Tech, and I, who I started in the business with, okay. found a way to create revenue streams through music independently so we were putting wow. out we couldn't get a record deal wow. so we couldn't we, so we learned distribution marketing in the bay area yes hooked up with an independent distributor hmm. we learned how to uh, manufacture press up vinyl and, and and cassettes and and we start selling these cassettes hmm. and, and we were selling like 1500 1900 at a time okay. and then we were charging maybe about uh a cassette costs about a buck twenty to make. Okay, we right. would charge about six fifty to the distributor. All so right. all of that money was coming back. And I like the profit margin. The profit margin was crazy <laughs> until I didn't do the taxes correctly. Uh, the silent partner. The silent partner. Yes. You know, I didn't even know I had a silent partner named oh, Uncle, Uncle Sam. Yes. You know, yes. I didn't even know we were related. <laughs> they normally <laughs> knock on your door a couple of years after you get that momentum going. And somebody said, hey, wait a minute, the cash you spent six months ago, 12 months ago, that belongs to me. Yeah. Yeah, it is a, it's a rude awakening to many people. Yeah. But you know what, Sway? I say plan for it. Okay. I mean, young entrepreneurs every day come up with great ideas and have the initiative that you just described. Mm -hmm. The key is really to get advice early. Okay. Okay, to embrace structure. Mm -hmm. And I know it's, it's most folks look at and say, well, you know, but I got a row, I got the momentum. Yeah, but remember, you know, there there are some tricks to the trade and there are some uh, administrative necessities yes. that have to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And preparing yourself to deal with the tax bite is one of those things. And, and I wasn't prepared. So when, when the <laughs> uncle came knocking on my so were door. So you, you were playing catch up? I played catch up. I got about 18K in a hole. Yeah, One okay, year, no and problem. I got thirteen k in a hole the the next year, right? And then that following year, the revenue stream stopped, Ooh. so I was still Ooh. stuck with the bill, and so I had to figure things out. But I figured it out, okay. okay. Uh, and I got an accountant. All right. Um, good first step. Yes, Dennis Middleton out of the Bay Area. Love it, uh, brother. You Come know, on. and he taught me a whole lot. So he cared about you. He cared about me. Yeah. See, Cause see, he it, sat. See, some of them don't care about you. Well, you know, Sway, I talk to people all the time. There's a difference between a professional relationship and a transactional relationship. Mm. Mm. See, the transactional is you're dealing with a vendor. They deliver the product. They don't really assemble it for you. And they say, here you go. Bam. It's up to you to figure out what I got in there and I, I'm not really here to, to have a lot of conversation mm -hmm. see but that professional relationship is where there's a commitment and there's an attachment to the outcome so there's advice there's technical assistance and then there's follow through on the outcome follow professional through. relationship professional like relationship that. yeah he got me where I needed to be and then uh, obviously yeah he got me where I needed to <laughs> come be. on but, but when I hear these stories of a lot of Folks who work in the music business, whether it's a, a, a Wesley or entertainment, Wesley Snipes yes. or Willie Nelson, yeah, uh, so many. Taxi Nicholas Cage, Nicholas uh -huh. Cage, yeah, yeah, Lil Wayne, come mm -hmm. on, 
you know, um, who was most recently? Uh, 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 Mike, Mike, the situation uh, from Jersey Shore. He uh, he could possibly be facing some serious jail time. Says uh, he's looking at up to nine years, but now uh, he's got additional charges and he could be potentially locked up for decades. Oh, my. That's wild. Yeah. Okay, so we have Lou Hutt here. That's the setup. Now, what questions do you have for Lou Hutt? <laughs> I got him. 888-742-3345. He's here to answer your questions. Sway in the morning. Shade 45. Get them taxes right. Done. Uh, we got Lou Hutt from the Lou Hutt Show. Saturdays, 9 a.m. on Sirius XM Urban View, Channel 126. Some of the we talk about a lot of entertainment news. You know, we we, we talk about a lot of politics, but he talks about money. Ooh. Money, taxes, and business. And business. But you know what, Sway, what yeah. I tell him what I really talk about is life. Break mm. that down for me, So Luke. much of what that decision making process. Yeah is a reflection of what we have to do in life. Mm -hmm. It's not linear, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. You know, there are detours. But as long as you have a point of reference, and that's what we talk about on the show. Get, let me give you a point of reference. If you got a main road you know you're getting, trying to get back to, usually it works out okay in the long run. Mm -hmm. A point of reference. Lou, what is your social media? Because it's, the phone lines are lit up. A lot of folks won't be able to get to you. <laughs> How can they get reach you on social media? Well, excellent. LouHutt.com. L-O-U-H-U-T-T.com. They can go to LouHutt.com, drop me a note, and I'm happy to reach back out. Okay. All right. Go ahead, D.B. You have something? We, we were talking about before you came in uh, to the studio about the new rule in New York where if you make under $100,000, uh, your, your student can go to college for free. Do you think people will try to withhold earnings in order to fall under that bracket, <laughs> you know what I mean, and try to be wow. slick to try to get wow. their kids free college tuition? Well, let's face it. it tax planning involves strategy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, while I don't know of anyone specifically that has brought up that issue, I'm not, I would not be surprised if someone entered into a deferred compensation agreement. What, said, what, what is that? So that's where I say I earn X number of dollars. Let's say hypothetically $120,000. So I would fall over that threshold mm -hmm. where uh, two things could happen. One is I say let's enter into a contractual agreement where some portion of my earnings will be deferred and paid out in future years. Another way to do it, potentially, and again, I have to look at that and that's law. legal. Well, possibly. We have to look at the details of it. Yeah, this language. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, but, but put it this way, it's on the table. Okay. The other thing, of course, and, and you know, it's a great way for people to literally save taxes and invest in their own future, is through a 401k contribution. Now, right now, under current law, you can put in $18,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So say, hypothetically, again, you make $120,000, you could literally defer $18,000, get pretty close to that threshold of $100,000. So there are a couple of ways right off the top that I start thinking strategically. And then what we do is dig into the statute to see what limitations might exist there. Mm. Okay. Lou Hutt. Lou, you on, on Twitter and Instagram too? Yeah, man. Lou Hutt? Lou Hutt. L O U H U T T. Steve from New York. Everybody who takes a get a, uh, has a question, I'm going to need you to be quick. I'm going to try to go through everybody real quick. Steve, go ahead. Good morning. How you doing? Hey, Steve. Oh, I'm all right. Lou Hutt. My thing is, I just filed my taxes. I'm pissed off. And I think I, I make about 70K, but I work like seven days a week, 16 hours. And that, I, they take out an outrageous number of money from me. And then I got to pay that back more money. It's almost like, why is it if you make a lot of money, you benefit, and if you make little money, you benefit? So it's basically it's like the middleman suffers the most, you know? Well, that's that's a real concern, and I'll, I'll break it down this way. We're in a progressive tax system. So what happens is the more money you make, the higher the rate. See, the rate starts at 10% and goes all the way up to 39.5%. The theory being those who have the ability to pay should pay more. Now, is it right? Is it wrong? Well, that's debatable. But in our current system, that's how it works. Now, a key for you at 70000 plus a year is you want to look to as many uh, pre-tax benefits as possible. So if your employer provides, uh, hypothetically, like group life insurance, uh, if they provide other pre-tax benefits, that's what you want to plug into. Got me? 
Yes, sir. All right, All right Steve, thank you. You're a citizen, man. Let's in the morning. All right, let's go to the next one. We got uh, Isaac from my hometown of Oakland. Isaac, what Yay, up, man? How you doing, Isaac. Oakland? Isaac from Oakland. What up, Sway? What up, Heather B. Hey. Hey, Isaac, just real quick. Um, What was Isaac from the Love Boat's real name? <laughs> uh, Isaac. That was his... That was his love boat name. Look oh, it up. You mean he, as an actor? Uh, yeah, was his, he came by the show. I can't. Um, oh my gosh! Jesus, I'm drawing uh, a blank. It, if, if I get the first name, I know the last one. What is it? Um, Washington. Something. What was it? Washington. Ted Lang. Ted, Ted Lang. Lang. You guys are good. Where is he from? These guys are good. He <laughs> is from Oakland. California. Ted Lang is from <laughs> Oakland, Oakland. Isaac. Oh, wow. I'm impressed. I am impressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do this. Y'all do this on the fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pull out your hip pocket. <laughs> yeah. You know. Hip pocket. That's what we do. <laughs> anyway, I, 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 <laughs> say hello to Lou Hutt. What's your question, man? Wow. What up, Lou? Hey, I, Isaac. How I'm, you doing? I, I'm good. How about yourself? Excellent. All right. I make like, uh, last year I made 102000 I I contribute 11 cent in my, uh, 11% in my 401k. Congratulations. My, my employer. My employer, they they match six percent on that. Fantastic. But my question is, they I, I feel like I'm getting violent, like I'm getting raped because I'm end up owing taxes at the end of the year. It's like, I, and I'm working, you know, I work two days overtime, and it's like it's it's almost for nothing. It looked good on paper as far as what I make, but I'm. I'm end up owing at the end of the year. Hey, Isaac, let me break it down this way, because that question comes up quite a bit. Folks say, I don't even feel like it's worth me working this second job or working overtime because they, I have to pay some more, so much more in the income taxes. And here's the analogy I use. If you're going to make a dollar and it costs you 30 cents, you still have 70 cents in your pocket that you previously didn't have. So don't focus on the cost of making that money. Focus on the residual that you have in your pocket after making that money. You follow me? I know that make yeah, you feel that make you feel it, any it better. Make- now, now here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. Getting money back is a function of what you put in. So it may be that you need to adjust the number of personal exemptions that you're claiming for payroll withholding purposes. So if you're experiencing this chronic situation in which you're, quote, unquote, paying in, you have to pay back at the end of the year, we need to fine-tune those withholdings. Okay? So uh, th- claim one or, or well, exempt so they can take more out? That's a starting point. That's a starting point. Okay. But listen, here's what we got to do. We got to look at your, your wait, wait, specific wait, 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 situation. Okay, here, that's what I'm going to do. Go ahead. Isaac hit up Lou Hutt directly. There you go. There you I'm go. trying to give you game. Because it's a lot yes, of calls. It's, it's a yes, lot sir. of calls. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 right, and, and, and he getting mentioned Sway in the morning, he going to give you this game for free. Beyond that, you're going to have to hire him. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. I appreciate uh, you, folks. No problem. Get at him. Lou Hutt. Um, we got Kenya from Arkansas. Good Hi, morning, Kenya. Kenya. Hey, Kenya. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Sway. Hi, Heather B. Hi. Hey, hey Lou. Hey, how you I doing? I had a question. Um, I'm good. I had a question concerning. I got recently got married, like a year and a half ago, and the guy I met married. He's a great guy. Makes really, really good money for Little Rock, Arkansas. But he owes a lot of taxes. Mm. And I'm, back taxes. I'm wondering back taxes. Okay. Should should I, and I don't. I'm good with the government. Mm-hmm. So should I file with him? Wonderful, wonderful question. Because people don't. Sometimes they forget. You have options when it comes to your filing status. Mm-hmm. So when you're married, legally, your only two options are married filing jointly or married filing separately. Mm. Even if you compromise a few dollars, somebody says, I don't know if I'm married filing separately, Lou, because it's going to cost me more money. Yeah, but maybe it limits your exposure. And you're certainly in a situation where you got your your new husband, great guy, wonderful person to be with and all of that, but he's bringing in this financial baggage. So the question is, do you want to expose what you all acquire jointly to the financial baggage that was, you know, that he was carrying before the marriage? As your advisor, I would say, heck no. You file separately. Until he enters into an arrangement where he can pay back these tax taxes systematically, you stay over and you stay out of the line of fire. 
So, so can we? What do we do about the house and stuff like that? Do he have to carry the house, or can well, I carry well, it? Like what do? We- well, we need to look into all of that. Okay, but as a starting point, for tax reporting purposes, you file separately, and then we can work into the other things. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Appreciate your call. Hey, 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 Kenya, get at him at Lou Hut. All right. We're gonna take more of your calls, and I, I want to go around the room too. I'm sure everybody everybody here pays taxes. So eight 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 seven four two three three four five. Sway in the morning. <laughs> Talking about this money. Sway in the morning, Shade 4 5. We got the host of the Lou Hut Show here with us Saturdays, 9 a.m. on Sirius XM, Urban View, Channel 126. Check them out, man. Every Saturday at 9 a.m., you can reach them on social media at Lou Hut. Spell Hut with two T's. So, this is tax season, and this is the first um, tax season um, under the uh, Trump administration. Man. Yeah. Uh, so, in, 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 what, what, in, in regards to tax reform, can we expect, and how does this administration affect this? Wonderful question, Sway. It's up in the air. Okay. The concept that they're entertaining is to reduce the number of brackets. So right now we go from 10%. We got about basically five brackets. Mm-hmm. Reduce that to three. Now the question, of course, in government, and as any enterprise, is how do we do those things and not come sh- fall short in terms of revenue? Mm-hmm. So the thinking is that certain deductions that people are used to claiming will either be phased down or eliminated. Mm. Can you give us some examples of well, some possibly the, the under- possible example for, would be state and local income taxes. Mm-hmm. Now most folks are used to when they do their federal tax return if they itemize. Itemized means you got to have mortgage interest, you got to have a property tax. You usually got to be homeowner to itemize. But bottom line is, most folks are used to claiming from their W 2, whatever the state and local income taxes withheld were, that's claimed as a deduction. Mm-hmm. Now, the thinking is across the country, why should taxpayers in Wyoming subsidize the high state income taxes in New York? Mm-hmm. So, they may either reduce or eliminate or set a ceiling on state and local income taxes. Same thing could happen on mortgage interest, which is we know is a hallmark for most people. They mm-hmm. buy a home. One of the incentives is I'm going to have greater tax deductions. Yeah. yeah. Right? That's why I bought one. So if yeah. you start to reduce the deductibility of mortgage interest, you know, sure, you got – you know, you got a fewer rates, mm-hmm. but you're going to pay about the same amount in taxes. That's my point. So, uh, you know, I just heard yesterday uh, the Trump administration has said, no, we're going to back up. We were going to go into tax reform, but we're going to go back and take another bite at the apple in terms of health care reform yeah. before we hit tax reform. So whether or not that's going to hit in 2018, the way that was projected is to be determined. Is to be determined. Okay. Uh Heather, you got a question for Lou Hutt? Yeah, what time tomorrow can I call you? <laughs> hey, Heather, uh, I'm an early bird. Me too, I'm here. Six is okay. Okay. All oh, right? Good. From six, especially this time of year, yeah. six six to nine p.m. is about my normal. You got a new client. I, I, just, I love it. I, I appreciate the way you broke down in terms of relationships because that's sway. No, just being in this industry for so long. Yes. A lot of it was just transactional, as yes, you say. You know, you absolutely. just want to be safe. You want, but to have a personal relationship with someone, and I, I just like the way that that's your concept of doing business. So I'm down. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm going to give it a shot. And and that's the point. You know, listen, I always say that doing taxes is just the first step toward financial planning. Mm -hmm. So it's just one piece of the game. Mm -hmm. The other piece of the game is what am I going to do with my cash flow this year? What investments am I going to make? Mm -hmm. Okay, right? And so, you know, I like to say to my clients, let's start with the taxes, but this is only the first phase mm-hmm. of what we got to talk about. Okay, Tr- Tracy, good. you got a Six question? Six o'clock tomorrow morning, Lou. Act like you know. I hear you. <laughs> Heather's on the line. Heather's on the This crazy woman called Heather's on Shout the line. Shout out to the guy. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> right away. She won't talk to nobody else. <laughs> Keep saying charge it to the game. Yeah, right. She mentioned sway, you know, my sway. And it's, oh, no, you going to know me, Lou. Ow. Sway in the morning, you know. Yeah, you going to be like, Heather. <laughs> Tracy, what you want? Okay, Lou. Yes, ma'am. Two questions. One real quick. A lot of millennials um, that I've had conversations with, yes. they have not filed their taxes in maybe like two or three years. I'm okay. thinking about some people. Right. Now, is the government really on you if you're not making a lot of money? Interesting. 
Well, let me give you the classic example, recent history, okay. relatively speaking. Wesley Snipes, prosecuted, three years, three counts of failure to file. Failure to file is very serious. There's two things that really piss off the IRS. I can use piss off, right? So you can say a lot on this show. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, hey, man, let's just keep it pissed. Okay, all right, all right let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> failure to file. Very serious now. I want to be serious about this. Failure to file and failure to report income. You can screw up deductions, and I'm not promoting that because that's a bad thing too. But under-reporting income, you're talking about bringing out the cavalry or failure to file. Now, IRS doesn't prosecute everybody because it can't get to everybody. Mm -hmm. But if, frankly, if you are a public figure, you're a celebrity, you're a politician, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're a teacher, you're someone with profile, be careful. They make an example. Everyone. Absolutely. They come and get Tracy. you. Tracy. Mm -hmm. They come and get you. Second question, real quick. Yup, super quick. So, for okay, going again with the millennials who don't have a lot of money, yes. what does it look like to hire an accountant? Like, how much usually is the well, that's charge? A good, good, another good question. And let me give you my lawyer's answer. Because <laughs> I do wear two hats. I'm a lawyer, too. Yeah. I see you. All right? It depends. It depends on the scope and the gravity of what we have to deal with. Mm hmm uh, it would be, I think, a little short-sighted to put a figure. I think Sway said it during the break. It's all relative. If someone can save you $1,000, what's another $200? Okay. If you're trying to build the Taj Mahal and you say, all I want to pay to somebody is $250, forget it. <laughs> you, you're dealing with a vendor. Yeah. Okay? But if you want what we talked about earlier— a professional relationship, generally speaking, people like that are going to be very fair, and their fees will be correlated to your income. Got it. Okay? Good. Cool. Okay. A lot of people, uh, I guess it, it, it depends. Some people say bankruptcy is not the, the way to go when you really just have no other options. Some people say it's not yeah. as bad as some people make it out to be. What's your stance on it? Well, I think it is a useful alternative in certain situations. Uh Taxes, for example, if taxes are an issue, uh, it is not always a panacea because in bankruptcy, uh, only taxes that are owed beyond three years are dischargeable in bankruptcy. Now, flip side, you got a lot of other debts and it's not manageable. People go through, I talked to Sway earlier, I said, we talk about life. Sometimes people split and it causes irreparable harm financially and they can't regroup and they got creditors filing liens and judgments and care. I think bankruptcy is a good thing. Don't be afraid of it, but just use it in the right situation because it is designed. Let's face it. It's designed to give you a fresh start. And there are two types of bankruptcy. One is reorganization. One is liquidation. For most people, reorganization is all they need. In other words, they need the court to intervene and say, hey, listen, we're not, uh, John Doe is not going to pay you $600 a month. They're only going to pay you $400 a month. But over time, you'll get paid. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense in some cases. We got Z from St. Louis on the line. Z, Z from the Lou. My home guy. Z, what up, man? Yeah, yeah. Good morning. Good morning, Sway. How's it? How's hey. uh, How y'all doing this morning? All You're right. Hey, great. man, you know Lou Hutt is from the Lou. What? Yes. <laughs> were you were you were you off of Kings Highway in Del Mar? Man, I'm off of I'm from out of Normandy, man. Oh, okay. My brother went to Normandy High School. Go for it. Yeah, all right. Look, man, I gotta be honest on this. Y'all you almost answered my question on, on, on the previous two questions y'all were talking about. Mm. So uh I graduated from, from college, was in the workforce. I did that for a little while and then I went out and I opened my own business. And truth be told, Man, I, I'm behind the eight ball on filing taxes. All of those bad things you just said, that's where I'm at. But my business does well. It pays the bills, but I, I'm getting to the point where, you know, I'm going to want to start taking out loans and going to a bank, and I'm already knowing i got to have some paperwork, some documentation saying, hey, this person substantially does this, makes this. I just need to know where to start to, to rectify this situation. Because when, when, I, when I say... uh not filing. I'm talking about more than more than five years. 
Okay. Well, let, let's start with the current year. That would be my suggestion. Now, we, we're going to have to do a look back. But let's start with the current year. And there's a couple of things that we got to do. We got to get you on track to make quarterly estimated tax payments. One thing about the Internal Revenue Service, they're receptive to a workout arrangement mm-hmm. as long as you have stopped the bleeding. Hmm. <laughs> so we need to stop the bleeding. We need to make sure that going forward, you're doing the things that the business people are supposed to do. They're supposed to estimate their income tax requirements and pay them in periodically. Technically, that's quarterly. All right? So that's the first thing. Second thing we got to do is we got to really do a cash flow to figure out what you need to do to generate enough bottom line where you have enough to pay all your bills and, and take care of your personal lifestyle and still pay the government. See, and that's where strategy mm-hmm. enters into the picture. Mm. See, it's not just enough to, that's why I tell people, don't just go to a, a big box and get some work done. I got it done. I just want to get this done. It's over with. I'm done. Yeah. Come on. And you hand the, you hand the account in the box and then... That's it. Oh, and yeah. Until the next time oh, you're in yeah. trouble or the next time you're behind. Sure. So yeah. the question when you leave that meeting is, what are the next steps? Mm-hmm. Frankly, when's the next meeting? When's the next conference? Now, if there's no discussion about that, you got a vendor. You mm-hmm. don't have a professional. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, and, and, you know, we can do some polls. I mean, they, they did a study uh, that said about 60% of Americans – would be financially distressed to meet an emergency expense of two thousand dollars. I remember that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. Now sixty percent. Sixty percent. Without having to borrow from, you know, Uncle John mm-hmm. or to draw from a credit card. Wow. Okay. So that tells me that these vendor relationships Another have not order. taken us where we need to go. A Z. Z. <laughs> There's a lot of game right there in that two and a half minutes. <laughs> Yo, for real. Uh, and, 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 that's, a, that's, a, that's a lot of game. Yes. That's a quick question. What will be my next session? Y- y- oh, your ne- yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah, question. Your yeah. next step <laughs> is to reach out to Lou Hutt. And not tomorrow because he got me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so reach out to <laughs> Lou Heather's Hutt. Heather's calling me at 605, so you can call me around 630. Okay. okay. Yeah, tell right. him Lou. A.M. Lou, <laughs> hey, Lou, Easter standard. He's at, on social media, he's at <laughs> Lou Hutt, H-U-T-T. And then um, also LouHut.com, okay? All right, Z? Hey, I'll be pulling over on the side of the highway, about to get on, and look at all of them that jotted down. I'll be getting in contact with hey, you. Hey, I appreciate it. Thank hey, you Hey, man, good luck to you. And go ahead and handle it. I pay quarterly. What are you? What you're talking That's about right. is what I do. I do quarterly taxes just to stay ahead of it, and That's I put right. stuff aside just in case. There you go. And citizens, just so you know that Sway's talking real stuff, that Lou will hit you back. I have a citizen on my t- timeline right now, Jonathan Lewis, and said, yo, HB, I hit up Lou Hut last week. That man called me. Pr- he called me back personally yes. and broke down my options so I'm all in and this is coming from wow. Jonathan Lewis hey, 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 fantastic Lou this the citizenship is a different <laughs> animal though we monsters <laughs> talk your shit Sway talk to Lou I don't know Please how don't he know met how you Lou is. but the, the <laughs> citizenship is a different off, monster Lou I love it this I is a whole it. nother level of the game right here Lou it's a universe Lou this the universe Lou this, these, these people tune in to Shave 4 or 5 every morning man they all around the world you might get a call it. from I New Zealand. I love it. I love it. I'm ready for it. <laughs> you ready for it? All right, man. Should we do some more call? We'll take some more callers from uh, the listeners. Dope, dope. Um, you know, we're going to give Lou the whole hour. Yeah. All right, oh, man. You All guys right. are sweet. I tell you. 888 We'll do rapid fire questions up next. You got to get one question ready, shoot it off, and we'll let it see if Lou can answer it. Peace. There's a show called The Lou Hutt Show. Saturdays, 9 a.m. Sirius XM Urban View 126. You know, there's a lot of platforms that offer a whole lot, but not many of them, not any of them, mm-hmm. offer what SiriusXM does. I agree. I yeah. agree. That's, you, you just got so you, many options. You got my applause on yeah, that. that. Right? You know. No, and the talent. Yeah. It's oh, incredible. It's cross Awful. the board. How many channels we got uh, under SiriusXM, Chris? 75. I thought it was 175, something like yeah. that? Yeah. 175 channels. Wow. Any given day, you can listen to us, what we do here on Shade 4 or 5, mm-hmm. or you can go to Urban View and hear some really important conversation that's um, insight, very insightful and in, <clears throat> in, in equipping the community with tools that they need to there improve their life. 
quality of life. You might even run into a Lou Hut right now. <laughs> You know what I mean? Luke's hey man, I'm just taking advantage oh, of it. It's like all it. these talent. Well, well, how come Lou Huck can't come on our show? Right. It's all in the same family. Oh, no doubt about when it. No doubt the, about when it. They pay for That's the right. subscription. You get all the family. Absolutely. You know, take advantage get, of it. Take advantage of yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Taxes are due. Um, mine are done. Um. Um. No, they're not. <laughs> uh, but they will be done. Uh, but I've extension, had, extension. Extensions. I've had tax issues, man. I've uh, in, in my early days, yeah. And then I told you earlier where I owed the government money and didn't understand. Can, can I make a quick point, Sway? Yeah. A um, lot of people sometimes shut down mm-hmm. at this time of year. They freeze. They paralyze. They get par- paralysis. And I said, listen, just file something. Even if you don't file the taxes, you mentioned the thing that is always the fallback. File a request for extension of time mm-hmm. to file. Now, here's the big difference. If you don't do that, you're subject to a 5% per month penalty. Right? 5% of what? Of any amount due. Mm. Now, how do you shield that? You file the extension. Now, does that eliminate all penalties? It virtually does, with one exception. There's the late payment penalty, mm-hmm. but that is only 0.5%. Mm. Oh. Right? Half a point. Half a point. Yeah. So that's early on what I would work were the extensions. Yes. Now I do, as you say, I, we, we plan it. My partner, King Tech. Beautiful. Uh, manages most of it. We plan ahead. Now. There you go. That's good. We See, put money aside. Shout yeah. out to King Tech. Yeah. yeah. That's called cash flow management. Yeah. That's adulting. So how long is this extension? Six months. Automatic. Huh. Automatic. Now I'm not I'm not preaching that people should procrastinate. Right. <laughs> but I am saying don't feel pressed if you don't have all your information. Frankly, if you don't have the right relationship and you need time. That's what the extension is there for. Lou Hutt is here, 888-742-3345. Tamika's on the line from Delaware. Good morning, Tamika. Hi, Tamika. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Okay. So my question is, I just heard what you mentioned about uh, extension, but my taxes are ready. I'm ready to submit them, but I don't have the final payment. Can I submit them by tomorrow and then just pay late? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, listen. Oh, good. Yeah. uh, uh, Once again, there is a late payment payment penalty but um the irs is i mean this is the time frankly where they say let's settle up yeah now that doesn't mean necessarily that you pay up but let's just let's get the books tied down for the 2016 tax year now uh, once again uh do they you know is the irs in the business of lending money the question the answer to that is no however they recognize that many people do have a spillover, and they do accommodate. There's installment payment agreements. There's even something called an offer in compromise. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, you know, to be candid with you, the offer in compromise, I think, is grossly misrepresented. It only works in a very limited number of cases. However, I just throw that out to say to you, Tamika, that there are alternatives. So if you want to file, go ahead and file your return uh, on time. And then if you need some guidance on what the options are, as Sway would say, hit me up on LouHut.com. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Tamika. (laughs) All right, Tamika. (laughs) Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, great. Will from Boston. Go ahead, Will. Hi, Will. How you doing? Good morning, everybody. Doing all right. Um, So my my taxes got hold this year because I guess I didn't file in 2011. Mm. So I filed it. Um, April 1st, and I was just wondering how long do it take back for them? How long does it take them to release my 2016 taxes? So let me make sure, Will, I understand. You mentioned 2011. Yes. Okay, how does that play into the plan? Well, I did my taxes I did my taxes this year for 2016, and I got a letter from them saying that they was holding my taxes because I didn't file in 2011, which I didn't remember okay. that okay. I did. Okay. okay, I got you. Okay. So what happens is that the federal government, through the IRS, has a right of offset. So if you got a refund for 2016, but you have a debt 
that's unpaid for 2011, the government is going to offset that 2016 refund mm-hmm. by the amount of the outstanding debt. Okay? So in some sense, that helps your situation. Uh, you know, these, these uh, debts uh, don't go off the books. They don't just fall off. As a matter of fact, they're on the books for at least 10 years. And they multiply. Okay? And worst thing is that the Internal Revenue Service, depending, on, depending upon the amount involved, can file a tax lien. Now somebody says, what's a tax lien? It's the most damaging thing that they can do, frankly, that's a matter of public record that just decimates your credit score. So take this as an opportunity, Will. You, you got a refund in 16. Apply that to the outstanding 2011. If you got to kick in a little more, set up a payment plan to deal with it. Okay? Well, they, they said I didn't know anything. I just didn't file. So when I filed it, I didn't know anything. I filed it, and I sent it to them, and they said my refund would come, but I didn't know how long it was going to take. I don't owe anything to them. Well, good so for you. So I filed it. How long does okay. the check usually take after you file, you think? Uh, you, you know what? If you electronically file, about three weeks. Uh-huh. And if you direct deposit, with the electronic filing, about two weeks. <coughs> How long ago did you file, Will? Um, I, I, I said the 2000, I filed uh, about a month ago, but the 2011, I had to refile it because I didn't file it at all. So I had to send it to the, what you just said, the people, to the offset program. Yeah. I sent it to them for 2011, and when I, I didn't owe any money at all. I don't owe no money at all because okay. I, I claim zero, and I never owed the IRS money ever when I filed. I've never owed them money ever because I've good. been working. You know, Will opens the door for another comment that's very important for people to know. If you are due a refund, and I sometimes get people that say, I haven't filed, and I haven't filed because they owe me, quote unquote. (laughs) I'll show them. (laughs) You only have three years to claim a tax refund, Refund. and then you waive your right to those monies. (laughs) Yeah, they ain't gonna just sit on it. Uh-uh. Oh, you, no, fifteen years from now you go, hey, you owe me. Yeah, that ain't, uh, exactly. That, Got it. that ain't the racket they're in. <laughs> <laughs> they're in the other side of the racket. Sway. All right, hey, Will, man, you're a citizen, man. Good Why luck with getting that Will? money, brother. Right, I'm gonna take one more because this guy's a contractor. Uh, where is he at? Um, he man, he got a lot of hey, St. Louis Greg. people calling. Call. That's Greg Sway. I see I it. Line it. seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of St. Louis dudes. Greg, what up, baby? Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, what's, Greg. What's your question? Real quick, because we got to uh, wrap this up. Hey, uh, so I'm a 1099 <laughs> contractor and a courier specifically, so road warrior. Road uh, warrior! So I, I had to get that in there. I knew that was coming. Um, <laughs> so when I write off all my mileage and everything, it cancels out, for the most part, what I owe. But when I go to, like, apply for a loan and stuff, wow. when they look at my tax return or no return, it shows that actually I made – very little income because of all my deductions. Is there a way should I just write off less to where it looks like I make more? Or what should I do with that? You know, that's the classic dilemma. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that is one reason that I encourage people to make certain that you keep reliable financial information. Because when you report the taxes, And I'm not saying that, Greg, this is the case with you, but often people exaggerate or inflate deductions. And I say, listen, you want to play by the rules because if you're in business and you have a a history of low or no earnings and you go to get a loan, I can guarantee you you're going to be declined because a lender looks at that tax return as gospel. The thinking being, whatever they report on that number under penalties of perjury Mm -hmm. is good. That's good information. And the lender wants to assess whether you or anybody else can be reasonably expected to repay the dollars they lend to you. So that's the process. As Heather said, that's the game. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The game is, you know, we got some money. We'll lend it to you. But we want to minimize the risk of non-payment. How do we make these assessments? Get the report card. That's the tax. Look at the transcript. Yeah. That's that's the information historically. Also, let's see what the employment situation is. And and although Greg, it it sounds sometimes uh, 
non-inclusive. When you think about it, it's a reasonable process. So bottom line, again, if, if you're doing great, you sound like you're in business, you're doing terrific, uh, let's take a critical look at that information and just make sure that your deductions are not exaggerated to the extent that it makes you look like you have uh, less financial capability than you truly do. Mm. Hey, Greg, and then reach out. Everybody tuned in. You can reach out to Lou Hutt at Lou Hutt, H-U-T-T, dot com and hit him up on his social media i'm not i'm not sure how good he is but i want y'all to flood his timeline <laughs> so, so he'll feel the power of shade four five Come all on right now. all right and he's at lou hutt thank you very much man kindly, it's man. great honor to that. be here brother oh, man, honor oh, to have appreciate you, the hospitality absolutely yes, absolutely sir. you got to come back i look forward to because it. he's an attorney an entrepreneur an author a business advisor <laughs> Uh, See, we got to have you come on back, man. All right. Anytime. Uh, all right. That's what's up. Lou Hutt, ladies and gentlemen. Up next, we got Star Lito and Don Tripp. They got the Step Brothers 3 Project. You want to talk with them? Call us. Sway in the morning. It's Sway in the morning. Only from Shade 45.